yeah. Chop Shop. Uh -huh. he, I land. I go straight to Chop Shop. Yep. I don't, maybe he's there. Oh, on the oh that's it. There it is. Oh, Talk yeah. about service. There he is. He's sitting in there. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Bikes on bikes on bikes on bikes. You got your hands on there, Ralph. This is a new LaSalle. Them last alleys? LaSalle Peak. That's a good looking bike, dude. It's passionate purple. Say. Hey there, crew. Rob Drew and Rich Drew here with Mr. Tyler Cloward from Fazari's Bikes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the new LaSalle Peak. This has been, uh, it's been a long time coming. It's been out three three and a half, four years uh, in the making uh, since the last one. And we're really excited. Uh, here in Phoenix, gonna go ride some bikes, uh, South Mountain, and uh, check out the new bike. I have seen it, touched it, smelled it throughout the past year, but I've not yet gotten to ride it. So I'm very excited to take this baby out and twirl it around. So I've been really pleased with the Delano Peak. It's kind of a do-it-all switchblade type of bike, uh, but most of my fleet is big bikes and I live and ride here at South Mountain so I'm very excited to see how this beast compares to some of the other long travel bikes that I've been riding. Uh, so it should really be a good, a good matchup against some of the other things I have. Like, there's some obvious changes in the appearance of it. Uh, I think, I'm not a fan of kind of the kink in the neck. Uh, several models have had that, some still do. You guys seem to be going away from it and I like the look of this bike. It looks like the Delano's big brother. Yeah, this is a complete ground up redesign. The only thing that carries over uh, from the previous generation of LaSalle Peak to this new one is the name. Um, it's the, the suspension's changed, the kinematics have changed, the geometry's changed, obviously the tubing has changed, how we're building the bike has changed. Um, it's, it's a complete new bike. You know, we've, we've upped the travel in the rear. It's now 170 millimeters in the rear, we're pairing it with a 170 fork. It is compatible with a 180, and even we have qualified it to run a 203 dual crown fork as well. So yeah. you can go, you can go crazy on this. You can go full park um, mode. Yeah, most of what we're doing is a 29 29 setup, but it is mullet compatible. We do offer the GA link um, or geometry adjust chip in the suspension, so you can change that bottom bracket height, change the head tube angle to really, you know, if you want to run that mullet uh, setup for a little more agility, depending on the track you're riding. And kind of the whole intent behind this bike was we wanted to build a super fast capable EWS race bike. But at the same time, we don't want to give up that, you know, that weekend riding, what, however you want to ride that bike, whether it's, you know, we, I've been doing rides four or 5,000 feet of climbing over 20, 26, 27 miles. We've done, uh, you know, bike park uh, lift days, shuttle days, all those type of things. So, you know, that's kind of the general overview on the bike, but, but a lot of the details, like it gets slacker on the head tube, we're down to 64 degrees now. Um, the, the chain stays grow by a couple of millimeters as well. But with that whole suspension design, we were able to uh, not only change the kinematics, but lower the standover height. We, we dropped the standover almost two inches compared wow. to the previous bike. A lot of companies seem to be focusing on the standover. I never really personally noticed it to be a challenge to me, but I'm an average height guy. So yeah. I'm sure for, for shorter riders, when they're trying to get the benefits of a 29 inch bike, anything you can do to get that standover down is gonna well, benefit. Well, that or you just don't ride gnarly up enough trails. Well, that's that's <laughs> totally true, that, that is absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> no, awesome. so with, with that too, like going redesigning the kinematics, that allowed us to really refine what was happening in that bike. So travel bumps up to 170, but we also lowered the leverage ratio. We dropped everything down, and so spring rate, so the amount of air you're putting in the air shock or the weight of the coil to match where you need to be at SAG, has come down about 20% from where we were previously. Nice. So me, I'm big. I used to be running like 300 PSI in the shock. Um, you know, I'm down at like 260 now, which makes so in makes, turn uh, you can run less damping on both sides, likely because you're you're not trying to contain so much energy. No, not, yeah, not that as well, but but also it allows for a wider range of tuning. So so it allows um, like spring rates and stuff like that. So instead of tuning, like I really want to refine like kind of that that top of the top of the bike feel hitting sag, or I'm like, man, I'm a big hitter. I really want to tune a little bit more for the the bottom out, which really really progressive bikes require or or bikes with higher leverage ratios yeah this brings that down so you can really tune both sides a little bit a little bit better you know going longer travel that helps whether you're pedaling or hitting drops jumps doing free ride stuff um, all of that stuff is ready to go 
So you said earlier that you've been running around like a chicken with your head cut off, so you <laughs> haven't had a chance to see any of the launch material, but on the Instagram page, there is a really good graphic where it shows the, the previous LaSalle, and then it has a wipe where it transitions to the yeah. new one. And, and I thought that was really fantastic how it, it clearly shows you all of the obvious changes in the bike and how much, uh, how much more pleasing to look at the new frame is. <laughs> Everything is just so much tighter and refined. I really think it. Well, good. Thank you. Like, it was good. Our our whole team has been awesome. Um, you know, we we put try to put together a package and tell that story. Um, our whole product team, our industrial designer Spencer, has just absolutely knocked it out of the park with the aesthetics and lines and and really trying to package that all together. Um, you know, and that's one thing that we we really try to do. We pride ourselves in is we're looking at a a full bike analytics. Yeah. So it's not just hey we're going to champion just head tubes or just a bottom bracket height or just one piece. What's happening with travel? What's happening with suspension kinematics? What's happening with bottle fitment and rider rider spacing on that? And that's a big thing that we're doing, you know, within that geometry. We talked about head tube and chainstay length, but it's what we're doing in the seat tube as well. Yeah. Is you know, three and a half years ago in late 2018, when we launched the first generation LaSalle, we were one of the very first companies to come out with a crazy steep seat tube angle at 78 degrees. That was a huge decision. That was scary. Yeah. Um, and now you know we've we've learned a whole lot more, and we're actually taking that a little bit further. Where you know you're an average height guy, I'm a really tall guy. I'm yep. six foot four. I ride a big bike. I ride a really really tall saddle. But there's riders who are five two, five three, and how does that work? And the way that geometry is really gone is we've been picking this arbitrary number or arbitrary point to measure effective seat tube angle. You know, it's usually off the top of the head tube and like, but nobody rides their saddle there. Nobody pedals a bike there. Yep. So what we have actually done is because of our twenty three point custom setup and all of the details we have from riders on where they're where their saddle heights yeah, are actually going to see position. patterns develop. Yeah, we yeah. can kind of see like on frame sizes and stuff like that where that saddle height's going to be. And we will go in and we took that information. We actually picked that point, kind of the average saddle height for a height and a frame size of kind of where we're thinking people are going to be. And that is what we made our, where we measured our, our effective seat tube angle. And we bumped that to 77 and a half to offer a little bit better traveling on kind of that flowy trails. And so, the actual seat tube angle to get the effective seat tube angle, kind of, yeah. kind of wordy, that changes. The effect, the actual seat tube angle changes on every single size so that we make sure whether you're you're five foot two or six foot five, you're running that 77 and a half degree seat tube angle that we really feel works best for engaging that core, for climbing, for pedaling, and really is the best of both worlds for up and down. Well, I think that there's a lot of hunger out there for some more extrapolation of those numbers. Because what I can say is, the Delano Peak, for instance, if I looked at a 485 reach number, mm -hmm. I would say, well, that's that's too big a bike for me because 475 is really the sweet spot. But because the seat tube angle is so steep, what it means is your your cockpit feel is just where you need to be. And when you step up out of the saddle, you're not feeling like you're tipping over. Now you've got that that kick ass attack position because the, the bottom brackets are exactly. farther back. And we and we looked at the bikes that way. It's like, I mean, you guys are coaches, you know this. Do you corner a bike sitting down? No, you don't descend a bike sitting down, you do it standing. So it's like, well, why don't we build bikes Rich that corner way? Rich sitting down. Oh, he, that's why he's fast. Well, he pees sitting down nice. too, but I mean, he does so, a lot of things sitting down. <laughs> so we, we, we built bikes that way, right? So yeah. it's, it's let's get that pedaling position in that strong position and, and that steep seat two angle, what that allows riders to do is to engage that core. And, and biking, you're basically doing one, you single leg leg presses, right? Yeah. Pedaling, if you get really simple. And if you do that with a rounded back, that's why your back's going to hurt. Bars don't need to come higher. You need to get your core stronger. You need to engage that core. And so that seat, that steep seat tube angle coming forward, it allows riders to be able to engage their core without having to offer so much flexibility. They don't have to have so much flexibility in their hips and in their back to really engage that. Gotcha. And, and it's hard to hold that position the further you get into rides. And so that was the whole reason why we went steeper is like, let's put the bike in the best pedaling position. And then with the advancement of dropper post, every run, everyone runs a dropper post get that saddle out of the way, you can stand up, get back, and you can move around that bike really well. And just like you're saying, you're, you have that roomy, roomy. Well, it's always crazy for me when you look at a bike on paper and you and you make judgments about it, and then you get on the bike and you say, wow, this, this is not what I would have thought yeah. that this bike was gonna feel like when I was reading about it. Yeah. So that's another reason why I'm really excited to get out and ride this bike and see actually how it fits me and how it, how it complements my riding style here at my home trails. Awesome. Yeah, we're excited to get out and uh, Get the bike set up, get all the suspension set, and send it. We're gonna send it. Uh, yeah, I say we just get geared up and we go. Now, the most important question, what do you think Rich is gonna think about the bike?
Hmm, I think Rich is gonna like it because it's a bike and he doesn't really care. You just give him a bike. All right. dark out yep we started much later than we expected yeah we didn't have it we spent way too much time jaw jacking with tyler not enough time pedaling yeah so my first impression is we didn't get enough time to have a first impression so sun was setting up national back down national it was a highway of pedestrian traffic so it was very very difficult to get a cross section so um I'm going to give you my my take. Uh, it looks rad. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous bike. Looks a lot more like the Delano, so I'm excited about that. The reach, the cockpit feel was decent for a large, but the wheelbase, it just it felt like a long bike, I could say that. So I'm kind of contemplating maybe a medium. The climbing... I've never ridden so slow on a bike and had so much traction. Like yeah, it's it weird. The, crazy. The, the Firebird likes to run in a harder gear than you think you should be in. And you yes. carry momentum and, and the 29-inch wheels roll yes. better. But this bike seemed to like better being in like 2-1, you know, the big rings. Yeah. Yep. It feels a lot like a Delano, but you can definitely recognize the wheelbase. So I think... I would probably try an angle set in it, yeah. take some of the head angle out, because I don't think it needs that, that the wheelbase is long enough for the stability. I think that that would make it handle better here where I ride. And um, I'm just bummed that I didn't get a chance to turn her loose, let yeah. the uh, purple people eater eat. Yeah, every so, time we yeah, had a section I, where we were going to try to pick up some speed, there was hikers coming up or somebody coming down and, and it was just a it was a mess it was a mess uh, when the weather's this nice here in phoenix that's yeah. what you got to expect trp brakes yeah rad. great brakes. i was pretty impressed with the trp brakes uh the other thing is i'm religious about cush core and it has a tremendous effect so when we talk about cush core we talk about the flat protection yeah 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 but one of the things that it makes a big difference in is the way the suspension handles I have two other bikes with the exact same fork and shock, and this one didn't feel as plush, and, and the stuff's brand new. So I really believe the difference is in the cush core. So if I could have thrown a set of my wheels on, I think I would feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah, I wish we would have went down Havelina. Yeah. And said, just because there were so many people, it was really hard. I just, I'm going to try to get out tomorrow, I think, and see if we can get a run. Because well, we've talked before also, the thing about South Mountain it's not like built jumps. Everything is very, very precise. It's double ups on small rocks, things that, you know, the size of a basketball, you got to land both wheels on. So timing is critical. And this bike is long and it's longer than I'm used to. And, and if it gets out of time, I think you actually might've even punctured a tire. 
So if you get out of time because of the wheelbase, yeah. you, you can run into some trouble. So I would be apprehensive about pushing the pace too much until I'm really comfortable with the bike. Yeah. And I would have pushed it, but I just, we didn't have the opportunity. We're so, going to have plenty more time this weekend. Yes. We'll get some more time this weekend, but um, I said I'd get a first impression out and we're going to get the first, first impression. First impression is it's a good bike. Yeah. It's like a, so many others, it's a good bike. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a good bike. And I think it, when we get a chance to ride hard, like dude, I didn't even use anywhere near all the travel on that thing. And yeah. a couple times where I really got to load in deep, it felt legit. So I wish we had more to say. I wish we had a better charge down South Mountain to give you, but we don't yet. We will soon. And you know what, dude? This isn't even like a YouTube thing to keep people attached. Like, sorry, but you got to tune in again to get more. I didn't even think about that. That's not what this is. It's not what it is, but it is. It is, it's not, but it is. It's not, but it is. All right. Trying to get some footage, bro. Oh, I didn't hear what you said. All right, a tale of two days or two rides. Back out today, things are very different. So quick recap, yesterday we just, it was late in the day. We didn't get much of a chance to get the bikes really set up. And then just riding was difficult. We didn't get to charge any sections that we wanted to to get a good cross section. So long story short, we talked about it last night. We made some changes today. So. Let me break those down really quickly. We swapped the wheels off my Delano. Industry 9, grade 315s, Cushcore Pro, Minion DHF 2.5, and yes, the sexy tan wall additions. So I think that probably made the biggest impact because the bike looks so damn cool. In addition, we flipped the chip. So we went from the low position to the high position. We had a couple pedal strikes yesterday. Um, just a bit unnerving um, wanted to get it up a little bit to see if that made a difference the other thing for me was I switched from the DBO bike to the Fox bike now let's create some context here I have very very little time on DBO it felt very unique and very interesting I have a lot of time on Fox when I got on this bike I just instantly felt more comfortable it's not a knock on DBO I think and a lot of people love DVO. I just have very little time on it. I prefer RockShock across the board, but I've really liked the Fox stuff recently. So the way this bike was set up, the way the Fox stuff worked, I just instantly felt a lot more comfortable on this bike. So those were the changes that we made. And it's a pretty big impact for me. Like I actually was able to charge some sections, get a pretty good feel for it. Now, the thing is super capable. I don't think anybody questioned the bike's capability. The lineage of the Delano, 170, 170, the thing is massive. The wheelbase is enormous. The thing is just, it's huge. And this bike has a much shorter stem. I think it's a 35. So the front tire feels way out in front of me. And literally, I kept making adjustments over and over in regards to my inputs. So this section, we just, I probably got 10 runs here filming on this. Every time through, I made my input sooner and sooner. They were coming so soon that I was frightened. Like there's no way I'm gonna turn to the inside and it just worked. So that being said, I wasn't sure yesterday, I was on the fence, should I go large or should I go medium? I'm gonna stick with the large. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna run an angled cup set and try to pull a degree of head tube angle out. So go from 64 to 65. I'll probably run like a 40, 45 mil stem and I think that will get me where I want to be. So 
I'm pretty excited today. I'm having a lot of fun riding this thing. Unfortunately, we gotta get back, clean them up, and give them back. But, kind of first impression, a lot of people are already asking questions. Here's a couple that I'll answer right now. The thing's legit. If you need a big bike, like you're riding some big terrain, you're hitting parks, stuff like that, I think it's rad. I think it's an amazing bike. I think you'll love it. If you're on the fence between a Delano and this, what I will tell you is, my Delano running 142 in the rear with the X2 and a 160 Zeb up front is legit. I rode Windrock with it and I didn't feel like it wasn't enough bike. So I've been trying to figure out how to summarize this. If you're a newer rider, bigger person, want to hit some big stuff, I think it's a great bike. If you're a good rider, you're charging big mountain enduro EWS stuff, I think it's a pretty good bike. If you're a good rider, but you rarely ride those things, I think you could make do with a Delano set up long stroke and a longer shock. So that's my take. Uh, I'm no expert. Hopefully that gave you some insight. I need more time on it. I think this is one of those bikes where you're going to get it and make some adjustments to really dial it in for what you want. So again, hopefully that provided something, some sort of context. You know, I'm bummed Rob couldn't get more time on it and give some more of his input. But either way, if you have questions, drop them below. We'll be happy to answer. Um, you know, greetings from beautiful South Mountain here in Phoenix. Getting ready to head up tomorrow to the Sedona Mountain Bike Festival and have some fun. So questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, stay positive out there. Have a great week. And peace out, dumpers. <laughs>